Hi, this is Toco US Brand Manager Ian Harvey. I'm here with Stefan Jung. Stefan is the head Toco chemist. He started working for Toco as the head chemist in January 2021. He's an avid telemark skier and also participates in other outdoor sports such as skiing, hiking, and mountain biking. The purpose of this interview is to introduce Stefan and give him the opportunity to explain about the new Toco High Performance, Performance and Natural Waxes. My opinion is that Stefan is the most important person in the company, and I think that any passionate skier and anyone who waxes, skis, or snowboards will find this interview enlightening and highly interesting. Stefan, thank you so much for spending this time with me today. This is a great opportunity for the U.S. to learn directly from you about these new waxes and new technologies. Thank you for the invitation. Looking forward. Yeah, same here. Okay, I realize that you are the Toco chemist, not the product manager, but I also know that you can answer the following questions better than anyone else. So we just need to keep that in mind that he's the chemist, not the product manager. Fluorine is banned in most markets and on the World Cup after this winter. That's the plan anyway. What is our brand philosophy regarding toxicity versus performance? Is it possible to develop very fast non-toxic waxes? Yeah, in, in our opinion and our idea is to make the fastest waxes uh, without using any toxic uh, substances. And uh, in my opinion, I think it's possible uh, because we already have seen uh, and we have some developed some really good high performing waxes. Uh, and uh, hopefully after the winter, we have more uh, on the way. Super. So just hitting stores now are the new high performance and performance hot waxes and high performance liquid paraffin waxes. I'm really glad that we waited a winter to introduce these new waxes because we learned a lot in the meantime, testing new materials and trying new things. Feedback from the recent World Cup events has been already very positive with some teams in the Nordic World Cup opener in Ruka, Finland, using the new products despite having fluorine available. Of course, it was extremely cold in Ruka. Um, these, these are fluorine free race waxes. What replaced the fluorine in these waxes? Yeah, it's, it's not just, uh, uh, easy to just, uh, replace fluorine. Uh, but in our case, we added three, a uh, different material to face this challenge, uh, to have a really good gliding works. And, uh, so, uh, in this treat, uh, substances are for, for example, alkylated dimeticon. Uh, which is a hydrophobic agent uh, that also offers uh, low friction coefficient. Another material is the organic polymer, uh, which also has a hydrophobic property, uh, but it's also dirt repellent. And we need it uh, to balance us the hardness of the wax, uh, since the first ingredient is a soft one. So we have to have a balance to get the hard properties of the wax. The third, third ingredient is an alkylated ester, which as well has a low friction, but it also has a strong antistatic uh, properties. And these three ingredients uh, guided us to the high performance level uh, for the new high performance waxes. Fantastic. Yeah, and it's great to be able to talk about ski waxes with ingredients that have never been used before. We're, we're in an exciting time to be in the ski industry, and uh, I'm grateful to be working with you. Thank you. When considering the toxicity of any substance, one always has to consider both the concentration and the dose of the substance. For example, if orange juice were to be extremely concentrated, it would be quite dangerous. Similarly, if a person were to drink a very large quantity of orange juice, it can also be dangerous. So if, if there's a lot or a little, it has a lot to do with how dangerous a, a substance is. Uh, I'm not trying to make any excuses. I'm just trying to kind of set the, set the stage for this question. And the question is, are the new substances non-toxic? Yes, they are non-toxic. Safety data sheets provide for customers as well as for regulators with standards to evaluate uh, products and their safety. Uh, the safety data sheet for our new high performance wax says they are neither harmful to touch nor to breathe. So we just using substances which are not toxic and not harmful for the human bodies. For those that aren't uh, aware of what a safety data sheet is, it's basically 
a standard from that governments use to evaluate safety of substances. And, and those standards are a little different between countries, but the United States has its standard for safety data sheets as well as Europe. And so that's what, what um, Stefan is referring to as far as the United States government goes. Um, they have a, a status, I think it's care unlikely to be required. And that's with ingestion and in your eyes and in your skin, et cetera. So that's, a, that's really, yes. yeah. Yes. Performance black is comparable to what was formerly LF black, except it doesn't have fluorine and it's got the new materials in it. It's an anti-static wax in the hardness of the red range. It has long been a standby wax in the line, especially as an underlayer for other hot waxes. Are we still using DLC, AKA diamond-like carbon as our anti-static additive in the performance black hot wax? Uh, yes, uh, diamond-like uh, carbon has proven as a really excellent anti-static. And as well, it's uh, fluor free So we just uh, decided to continue uh, with this performance black uh, wax. Except fluorine free with the new additives, but it does have that same anti-static, the DLC. The same anti-static, yes. Super. The materials that we are using have never been used in ski waxes before. What iron temperatures should the hot waxes be ironed at? The hot waxes meaning the performance and high performance hot waxes. Yes, you're true. It's the first time uh, we are using these substances in uh, net in these waxes. Uh, but the recommended iron temperatures are the same like uh, you had been using before. Uh, so for the for the yellow, it's uh, 130 degrees uh, Celsius or 270 Fahrenheit. For the red one, uh, or we call it a universal one, it's 140 degrees or 280 Fahrenheit. And for the blue one, which we, uh, the blue one, we have 150 degrees or 300 uh, Fahrenheit. Super. That's great. In the past with waxing with Jetstream or Helix, we needed to ensure that after skiing, the bases were free of any perfluorocarbon top coat. So the bases would accept wax. This was done by using race wax remover and a copper brush. Is there any special process that needs to happen after waxing with the high performance hot waxes or liquids to prepare the ski base for waxing? Um, no, for these uh, waxes you don't have, they don't um, uh, leave any hydrophobic shell on the base left. Uh, uh, but anyhow, you have to clean your base properly because it's really important. And you can do this by using just a normal copper brush, uh, but or you can also use a hot wax and a warm scrapping. Uh, and if necessary, also a liquid wax remover. But the most uh, popular or the best uh, cleaning in the World Cup, for instance, is that you take a copper brush and you use the wax remover and you massage the liquids on the base and then you clean it with a, with a fiber line. And then you also can see when you clean it on your base, how dirty your base is. And this gives you an indication what, height, uh, what uh, type of dirt you collect during your skiing. Super, thank you for those instructions and for the orientation on cleaning. It's also comforting to me to know that it doesn't leave a, a hard shell that needs to be removed in order for the ski bases to take wax because a lot of skis have been ruined in the past because of that. Okay, Yes. another question. Can the high performance waxes be mixed with each other as well as other non high performance waxes such as performance black or X cold powder? Yes, they can just like in the past with the fluorinated uh, products. Super. Um, and that's an important staple in the TOCO line. Um, we like to offer fewer options with the idea that you can mix them. So that's great. Yeah, this was also the idea behind the new high performance uh, level uh, that you like in the, in the World Cup, they are also mixing, uh, for, for example, the universal and the blue one, if it's cold conditions, so they're making their own mixture as well for the warm conditions. So this you can just mix uh, in the line, but also in between the lines, say between high performance and performance. Yeah, perfect. So we have a new wax that has come out. It's called natural wax. It comes in both 40 and 120 gram size. 
It is uh, also just hitting stores now in the United States. Can you please describe it? Yes, it's a natural box. It's biodegradable. It's uh, fluor free, of course, and it's only made from natural ingredients. Uh, so the main ingredients in this case is the canaba wax we are using. And uh, we are able to extract this type of wax just only using sunlight and without killing the plants. Uh, it has a high melting point, which is important for a good performance. And it's, it's safe for the people and the environment and HEX has an excellent prop performance for the natural wax category. Super, that's exciting. So I have a lot of experience with our base performance liquid paraffins, which I know to be absolutely an exceptional product. Um, and I know a lot about these from a scientific point of view, and these performance, that's a base performance liquid paraffins, and then also our high performance liquid paraffins, they offer a lot of advantages such as a super small particle size, which makes the wax both faster and more durable and eliminates the need to use any type of heat to finish it. This means that the base can be made hard for, uh, with, for example, a blue hot wax. And then when the liquid paraffin is applied on top of it, because heat isn't used, the base stays hard, which is advantageous, even if the conditions are warmer. This is because you then get the advantages of having a hard base, such as dirt resistance, acceleration, and durability, coupled with the advantages of the liquid paraffin, which would be hydrophobicity and slipperiness. For this reason, a liquid paraffin, either a base performance liquid paraffin or the high performance liquid paraffin applied over a hot wax is generally faster than going with a hard base layer of hot wax followed by the hot wax of the day. These same advantages apply to the high performance liquid paraffin? Yes, exactly. So it's the same concept, same advantages because- Like in the old time. Super, that's great. Yes. What other advantages does high performance liquid paraffin offer? Yes, uh, the high performance liquid paraffins, uh, they also have the three high performance uh, additives I mentioned before, uh, like uh, hydrophobic, slipper, slippery, and uh, strong antistatic properties. Super. Um, I'm really excited about these high performance liquid paraffins. Okay, um, do you have any application tips regarding liquid paraffin? Yes, uh, the easiest method I apply them, it's just you using your thermopad and then you spray uh, with the spray can uh, on the thermopad and then you apply it, the liquids with the thermopad on your base. So this uh, have uh, several reasons. So the, the coating is not too thick. Uh, it's a faster uh, evaporation time from the, from the liquids. Uh, so, so it's it's just easy for the application, and then afterwards you can brush it with a nylon brush if necessary. Uh, but in general, more is not necessarily better with a liquid paraffin. So doing it that way, you use less of the liquid paraffin. It dries faster, and it also creates less particles in the air for the waxer to 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 breathe. Yes, and you're also saving more material. So if you're applying this to the base, you don't need uh, as much uh, volume of your paraffin as when you spray it uh, directly onto the base. Have you found a disadvantage in spraying too much on the base? Uh, yes, for, for instance, it takes much longer for the drying period, uh, especially when it's in cold condition, it can take longer than uh, half an hour. Uh, and uh, it's not so homogeneous uh, coating on the surface uh, because if you spray too thick, it can run down. Uh, so then it's not as really homogeneous coating. So these are disadvantages uh, if you spray too much uh, on the base. And of course, then you're also covering the structure of your base, uh, which is not good. So I have an exciting question. I know this is a project that's uh, being worked on right now. When do you think we might see non-fluorinated top coats become available? Uh, that's a good question. So we are doing the best uh, uh, this winter to, to uh, get the best uh, top, top coating for the, for the high performance. Uh, we have some really good candidates uh, up to now and uh, we want to see them on different snow conditions and different weather conditions. 
Uh, so we are choosing the right one. And hopefully in the end of the winter, let's say January, uh, we might have one or two or three. So I know you were testing them already in Zolden. And also you had a testing R&D camp in Davos, Switzerland. And uh, I understand that the results were very encouraging. Um, we're about to test them in the United States as well. And um, it seems to me this is, a, like I said before, a really exciting time to be in the ski industry. And especially in the, in the with the Toco brand. Yes, we are, we are putting a lot of effort into the, the development uh, as well as in the testing. And uh, you can only have the best performance if you have seen these new uh, products on several snow conditions and several weather conditions. And um, I'm looking forward to, to offer this to the world. Super. Um, I know uh, this is not only an exciting time in the ski industry, but it's also an extremely busy time. You do double duty um, working in the office and in the lab, but you also go to events quite often in the winter. You go to World Cup events and you're going to go to the Olympic Games and you work directly with national teams with the aid of the race service. Uh, have you started that process? And are you looking forward to that as well? Uh, yes, uh, it's, it's really interesting. And uh, we are, we are, we try, I try to join as much as possible in the World Cup so to understand more uh, what uh, the race guys really need. And they also ask me uh, if they can already have some new type of uh, liquid waxes or powder solutions. And uh, sometimes um, they get something for testing and in the moment they are quite happy. So. I got information from one of the teams uh, in the World Cup that uh, I'm qu quite far uh, in the front with one of the solutions. So this is uh, also exciting for me, not only standing in the lab, uh, but also to be outside and see how it's working. Super. Hey, Stefan, I know time is short, um, as well as sometimes broadband isn't. <laughs> They're getting a storm in Switzerland, which has <laughs> affected the quality of this a bit. But I thank you very much for, for, this, for this talk. Um, good luck this winter in your developments of new products. It's a real pleasure to be able to work with you. Um, and I'm sure I'll hear from you in the very near future. I know I'm getting some top coat samples from you shortly, and I'm really excited to, to test them here on US snow and to hopefully offer them up as soon as possible. So thank you very much for this. Uh, you're welcome. And I'm looking forward to send you some samples because you have specializations in Utah. Uh, so I'm really interested in the results to see how uh, the new box compositions are performing with you. Okay. Well, same here. And thank you very much. And we'll see you soon. See you. Thank you.